I'd like to start this video by thanking you guys for all the support that you've given me lately. It really does mean a lot to me and it does keep me motivated in working on this bus. Now I read every single comment and one that I've seen a few times is what tools do I think are necessary to take a restoration on like this? What I do know is that many of you are either restoring your own vehicle or looking into starting your own restoration. This video is for the average person who doesn't have a shop or a lift kind of person who's going to be working on their bus in their backyard, garage, or front yard if your neighbors already hate you. Now to begin, I'm going to assume that you have most of the basic tools like a socket set, spanners, screwdrivers, tape measure, jack stands, jack, the usual things that you could find in your friend's garage if you're taking his tools. Now I'm going to break this down into the first six tools that you're going to need to buy if you want to start a restoration and then four tools that you're going to need further down the road as you get deeper into your restoration. Now let's get right into the video. The angle grinder is first on the list. Why you may ask? Well it is the most versatile tool that you're going to have in your arsenal. I would recommend not chipping out on this one as you're going to be using it so often if you buy a Harper Freight one it will break. Ask me how I know. You can use a cutoff wheel, flappy disc, wire wheel, polycarbide wheel, or grinder wheels. Actually, we don't use those because they suck. When it comes to cutoff wheels, the thinner the better. You're going to heat up your metal less. The polycarbide wheel is extremely good for removing paint, primer, getting down to the metal without overheating it and warping it, and you're not going to eat away any of your material. You have many different kinds of wire wheels that you could use with this. This is a very abrasive one. I would recommend using this one for some thick rust, but it, it is a dangerous one, so wear protection. And then my all-time favorite, the flappy disc. You can buy it in various different grits, but for grinding down welds, this is definitely what I would recommend. You could go with a 40 grit and then work all your way up to like a 120 and you end up with a perfectly smooth surface as opposed to the crap that you would end up with if you used a grinder wheel. On to tool number two. Coming in in second place is the power drill. This one I inherited from my dad and it's probably 30 years old. It's been working just fine. Now this is the corded variant of the drill. You could use a battery operated one like this, but you're not gonna get the same amount of RPM out of it. For polishing, buffing, and stuff like that, it's not gonna be as useful. As with the angle grinder, you can use various attachments for it and it's gonna make a big difference in your restoration. We got the polycarbide disc, flappy disc, polishing wheels, wire wheels, and then one of my favorites is the spot weld remover tool. It's an extremely versatile tool. Definitely recommend getting one towards the beginning of a restoration. And now let's move on to the next tool. Now using a drill and a grinder is gonna cause a lot of dust and that's gonna wreak havoc in your lungs. So obviously in third place is the respirator. As you can see, we like to stay protected here. Definitely recommend that you spend a little bit of money on this as it is gonna be the only thing protecting your lungs. And they're important. You only get one set of lungs and then what? Iron lung? I don't even think they use those anymore. Stay protected, get yourself a respirator. You're gonna thank yourself in 30 years. I know what you might be thinking. A light in the top six? Yes, yes, it's really that important. How do you expect to keep all your fingers when you're working in an area like this? I can't see shit. <laughs> now it doesn't have to be a super expensive light. Any light will really do. These are pretty cheap actually, but most of the time, to be honest, I just use a ring light. Ring lights like this are usually what girls use to take selfies, but they could be used in the shop as well. Whether you're inside or outside, make sure that you get yourself a light before you get started. On to the next tool. Now that you've cut up all your metal, you're gonna need a way to put it back together. That is where the clamps come in. Now I recommend getting a lot of clamps at the beginning of your project because you don't wanna have to go running to Harbor Freight, which is where I recommend you get them as cheap clamps do just about as good as the expensive ones. The little ones get as many as possible, they're cheap, if they break, go back and get another one. You're gonna be using these a lot. These are for holding sheet metal together. These will grab something and never let go. I'm including Klecos in here as they are a clamp type or a clamp variety. I didn't know about these until later on in my restoration and they have come out quite in handy. So get yourself a pack of those from Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Lastly, in the clamp category are these sheet metal clamps. These will hold your sheets of metal together so that you can butt weld them and it gaps it, holds them flush. Perfect little tool. On to the next tool. Perfect. 
Finally, the last of the top six tools, the MIG welder. Now you don't have to go and get a super expensive one. I have a Lincoln Electric MIG 140 and that works out perfect, but I've seen a lot of people get good use out of the ones from Harbor Freight, so that is up to you. Now it does need to be a MIG welder and you're gonna need the shielding gas because if you're trying to do any kind of body work, it's not gonna work with flux core welding. I tried that in the past, it was a big mess. Don't do it. Needless to say, you're gonna need a welding mask. Don't get a MIG welder and not get a welding mask. I mean, I'm sure nobody's gonna do that, but I feel like I just need to say that. I don't like flipping up and flipping down and flipping up. So I just got an auto dimming one, it's a Hobart. On to the next hole. Once you've gotten this far and you're ready to move on to the next step, a sander is going to be necessary. If you're gonna be working on any of the body work, you're gonna have to sand down the metal to get it to a primable surface. You can't just prime over smooth metal. The one I use the most is probably the orbital sander. A mouse sander is good to have. And of course, my favorite sander is the finger sander. You could grind welds with this. You could get into such tight areas with this. This is a Harbor Freight model. I haven't managed to break it yet. And it was only like 40 bucks. Definitely invest in getting some sanders. Finger blast, it's a finger blast. <laughs> On to the next tool. Now, some of you might already have this tool as it is a very common tool to just have in your garage to air up your tires. This is about as small as one that you could get for spraying small areas. It's gonna work. I've gotten a bigger one from Harbor Freight before and it did break, so can't recommend it, but Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you might be able to find a bigger compressor for cheaper. You could run sanders, you could run impact wrenches for when you have nuts and bolts that are stuck. So is it gonna get use? Yes. Is it loud and noisy? 100%. But you're definitely gonna need it to get your restoration done. So let's go on to the next tool. Now that you've got your metal cut, grinded, spot welds drilled, held together with clamps, welded together, you've sanded it down to where it's primable, you've got your air compressor. Compressor. It is time to get yourself a HVLP gun. Yes, this is from Harbor Freight, but guess what? It's done great. And I know there are a lot of purists out there that are gonna say this is a, oh, you can curse on YouTube now. This is a shit. It works fine for me. Now, if you wanna spend more money and get an expensive one, go ahead, but this list is for the people who are doing home restorations. We're not expecting our vehicles to look like show cars. We just want them to last a long time and to look nice. We're trying to stay on a budget. Get yourself an HVLP gun. You're gonna be spraying all kinds of stuff with this and you're gonna enjoy it. And now that you've waited through that entire video, that leads me to the last one, patience. They say patience is a virtue, and boy, is that true. Sometimes you have to have the patience to wait till the end of the video to hear what the last tool is, and it's patience. Now, why is patience so important, you ask? Well, working on a bus or working on any vehicle is extremely, extremely painful. And you're gonna need patience to deal with all the things that come up. Things that you didn't think were rusted, they're rusted. Things that you didn't think were broken, they're broken. Things that you didn't think were seized, well, they're seized together. So if you don't have patience, you're not gonna make it in the world of restoration. But there's good news. Patience is easy to develop. All you gotta do is sit through an entire Vangabonders video. And there you go, you're working on your patience. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you guys have made it to the end of the video, mwah. I love you guys all. It means the world to me. Now I know that this wasn't every tool that you're gonna need. It's a 10 must haves. I can't cover every tool in there. So if there's a tool that you think that I missed, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. Big shout out to my producer here who has been standing behind the camera this entire time. I could not do it without Mallory. <laughs> and if you're really lucky, you'll have the best tool in the entire arsenal. And that is good friends. <laughs> Thanks for watching check out the van art and see you in the next one.